This bomb will explode in 10 seconds if you do not enter the exact humidity as a two-digit number on the keypad now. Hmm. Uh... Oh no. No! 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 Let's face it, there are times when it's important to know the exact humidity. Perhaps you're a cigar afficanon. Perhaps you like cigars. Or maybe you're drying herb to exactly 62%. Maybe you're growing mushrooms that even Alice in Wonderland would be afraid of. These days, digital hygrometers can be obtained quite inexpensively, but they often create the illusion of accuracy because of their precision. 12 identical units from the same factory, from the same package even, can be off from each other from as little as 3% to maybe as much as 10% depending upon your luck. I'm creating this video because other videos on the topic fail to hit upon some important points when calibrating your hygrometer. To perform the salt test, you'll need an airtight container of any sort really, as long as you can see through it and fit another container inside. This could be a plasticware container or a Ziploc bag, anything. Salt, any kind, coarse, fine, kosher, table salt, doesn't matter as long as it's sodium chloride. A bottle cap or other small container, about 5 to 10 milliliters, and the hygrometer you want to test. The basic idea is that in an enclosed environment with a steady temperature, salt water will continue to release water vapor until the humidity reaches 75%. 75%, 75.4%, depends what study you're looking at. Fill the bottle cap with as much salt as will fit. You can't use too much. This comes out to about seven milliliters or eight grams if you're measuring. Just add a tiny amount of water, just enough to cover the bottom of another bottle cap. One milliliter, 20 drops we're talking about. Important point number one, don't use too much water you want to use five times as much salt than you do water. 10 times works, you have just enough water to get the salt wet, but not liquidy. Sneaky trick, use hot water. It requires less energy to evaporate, so the test goes a lot faster. Place the smaller container and the hygrometer in the larger container. Seal it and make sure it's airtight. Important point number two. Place the test somewhere the temperature will be stable. If you don't have a place with a stable temperature, don't even bother with the test because the results won't be valid anyway. Perhaps a closet or hallway that doesn't have any vents nearby, also away from windows that might let the hot sun in, and not near an exterior wall that will change temperature during the day. Wait a full 24 hours. The numbers will climb quickly at first, and might even briefly surpass 75 if you used hot enough water. Then we'll slow down. In fact, in the last 12 hours of the test, it might only increase a single percentage point. While waiting for the test, we're lucky enough to be joined by the primary author of that paper we saw just a few moments ago. Dr. Tom Hartley, thanks for joining us. Oh, well, yes, thank you very much for inviting me along to participate in your video. Is it true even state-of-the-art laboratories use the salt test? How can such a simple test be so accurate? All science actually is pretty is, uh, simple. And the physico-chemical phenomenon we're exploiting here in the calibration of hygrometers is the fact that that salt has a natural affinity for water. And that if you place uh, salt in a container, then it will absorb a known amount of water until it gets to a point of equilibrium. And the whole thing is about equilibrium. Is that why the test takes so long? That's one of the reasons why the procedures I've described and which you're going to embark on yourselves are going to take a time. They are equilibria and you must give them time to reach equilibria. In this video here, we're doing a one point calibration. What is a two point calibration? When would you use it and why? You need to do a two point calibration when you haven't got a salt that matches closely enough to the high, uh, relative humidity that you want to use. In the uh, paper I give a list, quite a long list of uh, uh, chemicals that can be used to do these calibrations with but they may not be readily available uh, and you may not want to go to the expense of them. So the answer is you're going to have to bracket with two calibration. You're going to have to check your uh, hygrometer at two points 
and I'm hoping that this little graph here shows up well enough. So what we've got along the bottom here is, for example, we've got our 33% relative humidity, which uh, corresponds to the magnesium chloride solution. We put our hygrometer into uh, that environment and it reads 40. This is what I've got here. My hygrometer reads uh, 40. And so we plot that on a graph, 40, point with the coordinates of 40 and 35. And then you do the same again using the salt and you <coughs> you you read 80 when it should really read 75. So you've got another point. And then you draw a conventional calibration line as shown there in the blue. So now you've had to do this because actually you want to read uh, uh, relative humidities round about the 60 mark, 50 mark. So you want to know, well, when my hygrometer reads 60, that the true relative humidity is 55. And you read that off, off the graph, just like that. And so if it's a customer saying, I want stuff at 55% uh, relative humidity when you deliver it to me, then you've got to set it up and wait until your hygrometer reads 60, pack it up in uh, <laughs> some foil or whatever you do to keep it uh, equilibrium at that humidity and send it off and you can be assured then that your customer will find that it's uh, arrived with a relative humidity around it of 55 percent so that's why we do bracketed calibrations thank you for joining us dr tom hartley and thank you for joining us the youtube viewer if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you disliked it give it a thumbs down that way i know what kind of content to produce next until the next video, this is Brian Klug.